everyone, Cherries here. Welcome to a new Plan With Me video. We are almost through the first half of 2023 and as most of you guys know, I switch into a new bullet journal every six months. So today is the day I'm going to show you my mid-year bullet journal setup in this Archer and Olive dot grid notebook. I chose this solar design in a peach linen hardcover. I bought it a couple years ago from a local stockist, Calligraphy Source, and I'm not sure if this particular design is still available in Archer and Olive's website, but I will make sure to link it down in the video description along with my affiliate code, Cherise10, that you can always use for 10% off whenever you get something from their shop. I know the shipping cost is still pretty expensive, especially if you're outside the US, so I hope somehow the discount code helps. But let's get started with the beginning setup of our new notebook. I usually start by writing my name on the first page, but I just want to jump in creating the 2023 cover. I'm drawing a cluster of flowers and leaves on the middle of the page using a 05 black pigment micron. I'm illustrating something similar to wild geraniums. I first drew five petal structure working from the center of the flower and then the stamen right in the middle. I want to make the first bloom facing a little bit downwards so we can create that illusion by drawing the stamen towards that direction. Then I'm also adding these fine lines for the veins but I like to draw them in these curvy strokes from the edge of the petals inwards and from the center of the flower outwards. Having these lines somehow add a nice flow to the petals. Then I'm drawing the same flower on top of the first one with pretty much the same technique but I'm just making it a bit smaller. As for the petals, I drew a couple which has little folds and the stamen facing forward and I also added the fine lines as well as a bit of shading. On top of the second bloom is a bud. I drew the stem, the sepal which are small green leaves at the base of the flower and smaller furled petals. I'm drawing these flowers the way I would sketch with a pencil so you can see there are more strokes than when I do a mono line art which has steady single strokes. I just prefer this kind of style with pen drawing since my hand is also pretty shaky so I tend to jerk and ruin my line art if I do but I do love the simplicity and clean look of mono line drawings. There are different ways to draw the leaves. For this, I like to start with a long line for the midrib, making it a bit curvy towards the end, and this way makes it also look natural. Then from the tip, I'm drawing the blade, kind of like in sections. It starts quite thin from the tip and going wider towards the other end, forming a spearhead shape adding some shading and slanted fine lines as well from the midrib outwards. Then I just proceeded with a few more of the same flower, bud, and leaf to complete the whole cluster. My 2023 yearly bullet journal setup and my previous notebook were colorful. I will leave the link to the video in case you need more inspiration. This time, I want to keep the illustrations in black and white, but I didn't want the whole setup to be boring, <laughs> so I'm gonna add some colored papers as accents. I was looking at my previous mid-year setups, and I really liked my setup from last year with the use of craft paper. So now I chose two colors. One is this lilac. For this cover, I cut it into a partial arch shape that I glued all the way to the edge of the page. Then it's time to write the year 2023 using this black Tombow brush pen, but you can actually just use the same black pen used to draw the floral illustration. I'm writing the numbers in a bigger size and just shading them all with black. And 
and that will just be my simple 2023 mid-year cover page now the second color i'm using for the paper is sage green i cut a circle shape and glued it on the top center of the spread then we will move on to the left side and this is where i'm writing my keys or bullet symbols that i use regularly in my bullet journal i'm writing the keys title in this uppercase serif font i'm actually using a ruler to keep the top and bottom straight I got reminded of this technique by Anna of Journal Away. I used to do it this way too, but I forgot about it until I saw her do it in one of her videos. Below, I'm listing down my set of symbols, which are still the same over the years. You may use the original bullet journal keys by Ryder Carroll, who's the founder of the system, but you can also customize them. You can choose other symbols, but the simple the better and easier to remember. So for those of you who are new with bullet journaling, you don't necessarily need to start in the beginning or in the middle of the year. You can start whichever month you'd like and just migrate into a new bullet journal once you're finished with your current notebook. I'm just drawing one more cluster of the same flower on the bottom. I probably have two to three illustrations of this flower in the whole setup, but don't worry, I'm gonna be drawing other kinds of flowers later. I just love drawing this one repeatedly. This is actually a drawn version of my painted flowers from my February setup. I really loved painting those, so I'm happy to draw them again in this new notebook. Even if they are in black and white, I think I naturally chose the colors of the paper I'm using here in lilac and sage, which are close to the main colors of that monthly setup. Alright, to complete, this whole cover spread is a simple line border and we're finished with the first pages. Now let's set up something functional which is my future log, starting with my title here with the uppercase serif font. Then I'm drawing a branch of purple leaf plum that is hanging on the left side, but this can actually be any flower if we add color to it. It can be a cherry blossom. There are many flowers that look similar, especially if they are in the same family. I'm drawing the blooms sideways, so the back of a couple petals are facing forward in this perspective. But I'm also drawing the bloom in the middle where one petal is not totally covering the stamen. Then there are leaves and flower buds as well that are in different growth stages. Next, I am gluing this rectangular lilac paper with rounded corners on the page to the right and half of this round sage green paper on the left. I wanted to add thick lines in the design. I thought of using papers, but it will just take me forever to carefully cut thin strips and putting thin glue on them. So I'm just using the fine tip of these Zebra Mite Liner pens 
You can actually use colored pens too for the bigger shapes instead of paper, but I just love the solid appearance of the colors. Big thanks to Mihaela of Bloom and Dot because I love her usage of colored papers in her bullet journal, so I got inspired by the idea. On the rectangular paper, I want to include a passage from the scripture just like from my previous future log spread. I chose this beautiful verse from the book of Proverbs and instead of writing them, I'm just using wooden stamps. Now it's time to create the calendar. I'm only writing the remaining 6 months. I'm writing the month in numbers in a big font size and the mini calendars respectively. Lastly, I'm drawing thick lines on the empty spaces using the chisel tip of this brownish color zebra mite liner. And that completes my future log spread. I'm honestly loving this layout, but we can now move on again to the following pages. I cut a narrow arch shape of this sage green paper and I glued it horizontally on the top left of this page. Then I'm drawing a smaller flower with little twigs of leaves on top of and overlapping the paper. After that, I'm writing my word of the year, which is faith in italic style. I'm glad I picked this as my word of the year because even though I just started dedicating myself to know God more and read his word, there are still struggles and trials that I'm facing. If you're in the same journey as I, I think you can relate to that. So this word is my constant reminder. It won't be smooth sailing all the time, but as it is also written, these trials produce perseverance, character, and hope. There is no instant gratification, but above all that, I never felt struggle yet still have peace in my heart. It's a peace that transcends human understanding you know, it, it doesn't make sense. Even I don't understand it. <laughs> but I'm here to say that it is possible when you earnestly seek him and have a loving relationship with him. Okay, so on this spread, I also included sections for big dreams and affirmations. Then I cut out this page into a Dutch door. I am drawing another cluster of wild geraniums on the bottom corner, but they appear like a different flower here because geraniums are five petal flowers. However, I drew six or more petals here. Anyway, I did the same technique as I did from the cover page.
I'm also drawing double thick lines on the bottom left and then gluing more of these abstract shape colored papers. I'm only sticking with three shapes for these colored papers, round, arched, and rectangle. On the empty space to the right side of the spread, I'm drawing several green lines just for design. <laughs> Flipping this Dutch door page, I'm gluing another arch shape paper of the same color that match the paper from the word of the year. Then I'm writing the goals title in the same italic style. Below will be sections for each category such as personal, family, finance, spiritual, creative, and career goals in lowercase serif font. One thing I personally find useful about switching into a new bullet journal in the middle of the year is checking in with my progress in terms of my yearly goals so I can see what I have already accomplished or still working on. Those that I have accomplished won't be migrated here anymore then I'll have a space for a new goal that I may have. When I looked at the categories, the way I wrote them, I feel like the font size are too big. So maybe you can make it smaller if you're going to recreate this layout. But one last design for this spread is an illustration of gardenia flowers. These are similar to roses in shape and form. So start with the stems, then the central petals, and continue adding the irregular and uneven shapes around. I also added fine lines and shading. These are just like quick sketches, but you can also work on them a bit more. Okay, these spreads are now done. Let's move on again to the next ones. I'm setting up a budget tracker to organize my finances. First is the title again on top of this colored paper and an illustration of magnolias below. We're drawing them in a bigger scale, so start with a thick wavy stem and then draw the first long oval-like shape petal on the center. Add the next petals on both sides that are partially covered by the center petal. Then some more petals on the sides that are stretched out. I'm drawing a couple leaves here too and another magnolia bloom above the first one. This time, I'm adding the sepals in the view and just drawing the petals like so. When I'm finished with the illustration, I'm cutting three sheets into Dutch doors again with tabs on top. First, I colored the tabs with the pink and green zebra mag liners in the hopes that I'll mark them accurately, but I miscounted the number of spaces, but I just fixed it when I was cutting the sides and top areas. Cutting tabs this small can be a struggle too, so an alternative would be folding colored sticky notes or a regular colored paper and glue them together, which I could have done here too. <laughs> After that, I wrote the months on the tabs 
and the list of the things I want to track here such as my income, expenses with a breakdown of each, and my total savings for the month. This has been the easiest way for me to track my finances so far. I only did July for the meantime, but I'll continue to write for the following months later. Next is my savings section. I'm having the same layout as the previous yearly setup where there are columns for description, planned amount, and total amount. I don't fill this every month. I wait until all six months are computed and from there, I'll take percentage or allocate the money for each of the description I listed here. My collections or spreads from the first half notebook is pretty much the same, but there are some that I changed. The needs and wants section, for example, I changed it into to buy section instead and I'm not including the wish list here anymore. Sometimes I let go of a certain spread or spreads, so it's totally fine when you try and experiment several collections in the beginning of the year and then reassess if you still need them when you move into a new journal. So I completed this page with another floral illustration and we are down to the last spread I'm gonna be making for my mid-year setup. I glued all these shapes first and drew the colored lines. I'm writing the period tracker title on the top center of the spread and below are the months in numbers. Previously, I patiently drew small boxes for each day of the month and I agree it is so tedious. I didn't realize I only needed to set up for the first six months but I did all 12. <laughs> but now I'm going back to this linear dotted layout. The dots are the dates. It is easier and faster to draw. <laughs> so I use this by encircling the dates when symptoms occur like headache, cramps, acne, or bloating, and crossing them when bleeding starts. I still need to count every time though since I didn't number the dots, but it's okay. I'm drawing one final illustration right in the middle of the spread. I drew a tulip in my first half setup, so I thought of doing the same flower here, but I'll make it three. I began by drawing three long stems that are crossing each other, and then long curvy leaves in varied directions. A couple straight up, one sideway, and one bent downwards. I added details as well such as fine lines or vein-like lines to the leaves and shading to add a bit of depth. Then we will move on to the flowers. I am following a U-shape to draw them. Again, starting with the front petal on the center, the side petals, and there are also some that are slightly visible at the back. Likewise, I'm adding thin lines and shading to define the flowers a little bit and darken the insides and lower parts. Okay, that's pretty much it for my new bullet journal setup for the second half of 2023. Let's do a final flip through before we go. I hope you had fun setting up these migration spreads and drawing many flowers with me in this plan with me video. I hope you also got some bullet journal ideas for your own beginning pages as you start anew or maybe in the future. I'm excited to use this notebook and see what else I can create in the monthly setups. So consider subscribing so you won't miss more bullet journal content from me. 
Alright, that would be all for today. I pray that the second half of the year be filled with blessings and good health. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!